Good morning. Welcome back. You're watching Breakfast Television. Thanks for joining us on this Monday morning. As BC's party leaders enter the second full week of campaigning, one pollster has been asking British Columbians what you think are the most burning issues in this snap election. And joining us now is Mario Canseco from Research Co. Good morning. Nice to have you. Good morning. Great to be here. So party leaders all making appearances in the Lower Mainland today. What are you watching for this week? Well, we have a lot of seats in the Lower Mainland, so it's important for them to try to connect, particularly when it comes to the Liberals. You know, they need to get some seats here, try to essentially connect with voters in an emotional level, which is definitely necessary at this stage. We don't see the numbers for Andrew Wilkinson in the same way that we did back in May, so he needs to establish that emotional connection with voters and essentially try to get people to look at the Liberals as an option. All right, and what about the NDP and the Green Party? What are you watching for this week? For the Greens, it's about announcing candidates. It's a very tough undertaking for them. They have a new leader. They need to find people who are willing to run. Uh, for the NDP, it's essentially reconnecting with those voters, trying to figure out if they'll stay with them. There are some major candidates that are running here, and it's definitely crucial for them to try to get some of those voters out and essentially tell them, you know, things are okay right now. You should give us this mandate. All right, Mario, I wanted to talk to you about attack ads. The Liberals and the NDP, they're expected to release those ads today. How do you find that these attack ads uh, traditionally affect voters? They're like a cough syrup named a Buckley's. Uh, they taste <laughs> awful, but they work. Uh, this is the reason why they do it. It's, it's definitely crucial for most of these parties to try to talk to people and essentially not necessarily suggest that they're the best, but also try to make them look at their rivals in a negative light. And this is the reason why it's done. And this is also the reason why it's done early. You don't want to do this a couple of days before people vote. You want to do it now so you can plant that seed and make people feel, well, maybe this is not what I want. Right. Do you find that traditionally it negatively affects voters, kind of leaves them a bad taste in their mouth? It kind of happens. I think these are ads that are essentially designed to make sure that the people who will vote for you stay there. You know, if you're thinking about flirting with other parties, look at what they're doing, look at what they're saying, and this is why we want you to stay. It doesn't move you from one side to the other, but it definitely makes those who are voting for you stay there. All right. Wanted to talk to you about some of the main issues during this uh, SNAP election, housing and homelessness, uh, the economy and jobs, health care. But housing and homelessness uh, seems to be the number one issue uh, for those 18 to 34, the younger age bracket. The number one issue for young voters by far. This is similar to what we saw in the last election when housing was number one all over. It's a lower mainland issue, but it's also a youth issue. People who are worried about staying where they are right now. If you're a Generation Xer, if you're between the ages of 35 to 54, you're more likely to be worried about the economy and jobs. And if you're over 55, you're more likely to be worried about health care. So this is definitely challenging for the leaders. You cannot talk about one specific issue. You need to talk about all three if you want to be connecting. Right, and try to connect with all of those different demographics. And you're also finding in your latest poll that most people plan to vote online in this election, a big jump from the previous one. Mail-in ballots are absolutely crucial this time around. Uh, four years ago, we had roughly, you know, a little bit over uh, two out of 50 uh, residents who voted uh, by mail. And this time around, we're looking at around a third of those votes. Now, legislation establishes that you count these ballots 13 days after the election. So if we have a third of the electorate voting after, you can't really know who's going to win this thing until two weeks later. So we might be headed for the longest election night in history. <laughs> There's going to be a big delay. Okay, Mario, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Great to have you, and uh, hopefully we can connect with you next week once you have some more uh, updated research. Gladly. Thank you, Mary. All right, that is Mario Canseco with Research Co. It is